So a number of you guys have been asking what my thoughts are on the new naval update for Foxhole. And, you know, I've had some time to think about it and I didn't want to really talk about just my immediate knee-jerk reaction to the dev stream. I think plenty of people had enough opinion to share about that on the subreddit, but uh, after talking to some other folks in the community, I think now's a good time to dive into my thoughts on the update and what I'm most excited about and what I'm least excited about. I do have some insider information on <laughs> some of the costs, which I'm not gonna divulge my sources, don't even fucking ask, but we're gonna talk a little bit about those as well. Stick around, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. So let's get started with the different ships. We've got three new ships for the Colonials and three new ships for the Wardens, plus a few new troll ships as well. So we're gonna start off with the Warden ships. They have a gunboat, they have a battleship, and they have a submarine. So for the Warden ships, as somebody who doesn't really play on the Warden faction, don't really have too much of an opinion on their gunboat, uh, their battleship looks pretty cool. I think the gunboats and the battleships are pretty equal when it comes to the colonial counterparts that we'll get into. Yes, there's some variation with the types of armaments on the battleships. <laughs> when we talk about costs, this is all subject to change. It's not actually confirmed or anything like that, but we have on screen here the total cost for the battleship. Um, don't have numbers yet on the gunship at the moment, but this is what we're looking at for the battleship. Unsure if this is going to change between the factions or if this is just one faction over the other. Lastly, of course, we have probably the most controversial part of the update, and that is the Warden Submarine. I'm just gonna shoot straight with you guys. I'm not really happy that the Colonials don't have a submarine. I know that a lot of the Wardens in the dev stream chat were saying, oh, well, you guys got the counter, you got the destroyer, it's totally fine. At least you have uh, another ship as well. It's not like one side has two and the other side is three. I think people forget it's the cool factor. Like, could you imagine if there's going to be a uh, aerial update and we get bombers, biplanes, and fighters, and the fucking Wardens get AA, and it's like, well, you guys have a counter. <laughs> like, shit, dude, that's awesome, dude. We got, the, the Wardens got a counter, so it's fine, shut up. I think in reality, I understand that there may be limitations to the current engine, and that's what one of the devs had mentioned in the Q&A on the subreddit, but um, again, it just sucks to miss out on some of the uh, the cool new content. Um, but it sounds like they are going to be working on coming up with a colonial variant, hopefully sometime soon, which leads me more into the colonial variants of the ships. So we've got as well another gunboat for the colonials. We have a destroyer that's supposed to counter the sub and a battleship as well. The battleship looks fucking mint for the colonials. I am just to compare the two colonials, just poo poos on, on the worn one. Um, I like the armaments on it. I like the way it looks. I like the way battleship play is going to end up uh, requiring a lot of teamwork. Um, I think <laughs> I think some other regiments might end up hating that if they've got a bunch of randoms on their ship. Me personally, I think it'll be hilarious. It's going to end up being like barrel trauma in Foxhole. I think the destroyer is going to be super cool considering it has the ability to provide intel. Um, that's going to have some pretty interesting tactical usage there. And again, you know, you've got depth charges to deal with the submarines, which this is another point of contention personally for me. Do I want to be laying mines uh, 30 minutes before a naval invasion so that my boat base is safe? Not really. <laughs> Not really at all. There's going to be a need for a lot of synergy, synergy between destroyer, battleship, and also the boat bases, which is the other new boat that's being added for both factions so now we're gonna have instead of white whales boat bases that allow us to uh, effectively have a mobile spawn in the water and we can create landing craft that take no time at all to make and you drive those landing craft to the beach and you can actually turn them back into bee mats once you've landed uh, I think that's a huge shout out and a lot of recognition needs to be had for the devs for thinking about what is fun and what isn't fun right so it's not fun to just ferry people back and forth from 
a naval invasion. Most people want to be in the naval invasion itself. So good on them for thinking about that. Why don't we think about ways we can make facilities more fun? What do you say, guys? Uh, bullshit aside, so far, everything here is looking pretty good. Again, bummed out about not having subs, but I'm not going to give the devs too much grief about it. There's so many other things to be excited for. And me personally, I'm most excited for the way naval invasions are going to play out in the next update. In addition to just how the boat bases work, they act as a mobile spawn location. So similar to how white whales were mobile spawn location for uh, ooh, sorry, for beaches, you can now set that up in the water. Um, there's also going to be cargo ships where you can pull tanks out and put them on the landing craft. Um, you can also land both of these ships directly onto the beach if you wanted to. And I guess the front of the cargo ship opens up and you can drive uh, tanks out from there. Oh yeah, before I forget, so they've added, again, with the theme of barrel trauma, uh, you will end up taking on leaks and water if you take hits from enemy naval craft. So you need to have a crew aboard that can patch up those leaks and throw water off the ship. I think that's pretty cool. It makes the game more dynamic instead of, you know, just a bunch of people sitting on a boat waiting to get to their destination. You actually have to play as part of the crew. Part of the crew. Part of the ship. Part of the crew. Part of the ship. Part of the crew, part Steady of the man. ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. And you need to make sure you're doing your job effectively in order to keep the ship alive. Oh boy. So we got more resources, more facility requirements and management. Um, I'm excited for the map getting bigger to cater to the new naval content. And uh, island fighting and naval blockades are going to be a common occurrence. And with that, let's move on. I can't believe it, guys. They added fucking towing. This is going to be used for moving heavy field guns that require deployment and transport trailers. Probably the second piece of content I am personally most excited for because I've always wanted additional trailer space for resources or fuel, and the ability to move field guns will be unique and interesting from a gameplay perspective. Um, not much else to say. Uh, we've got a few different variants of the trailers on screen here, and each vehicle has different towing capabilities, um, with smaller vehicles having less towing power, and the bigger vehicles, which we're going to get into, having more towing power. So with that, let's get into the new vehicles. We got a new truck for the Colonials, we got a new half track for the Wardens, and we've got self-propelled artillery. Uh, the self-propelled artillery, I don't know if anyone spotted this, but it looks like it's the chassis of the battle tank. I don't know if that's going to have a play on how expensive that ends up being, uh, but we will see. Unfortunately, I don't have information on the, the cost of that, but uh, TBD on what that ends up being. I think the cost is going to be a huge factor on whether me personally I would try out the new arty pieces or just stick with the naval content. And lastly, we have nukes. Nukes for all. Guys, we can all nuke Atlantis together. Holy shit, I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for this as well. In terms of just the cost for these nukes, I've posted them on screen here, but they're supposed to be uh, close in terms of cost with a Railstorm Cannon. You're also gonna need an Intelligence Center for targeting, and that allows you to target locations both in the hex that the nuke is built and adjacent hexes. And that's pretty much it. I know it's a high overview run through of the update, but I wanted to give you guys kind of my thoughts on everything. Overall, I'm super excited for the update. I'm gonna be playing the update with the Gremlins. Super excited to be working with some allies as well as we try to tackle that massive cost for the battleships and all the other naval content that there is for us to explore. If you guys are interested in joining the Gremlins for that update, uh, feel free to join the Discord in the description below. Send a screenshot of your F1 screen to the Foxhole chat channel in the Discord and we will get you added when that war starts. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.